That is true. Well, good morning, everybody, or good evening or afternoon, wherever you might be. I know Ed and Will, it's afternoon over there. Alan and I, it's in the morning. But good morning and welcome to Brunch and Book Talk, episode five. I'm really excited to have some great guests here to, today to just talk about books. If you're here in the chat, say hello in the chat. And if you have any questions for any of us, please drop them down there. This is Brunch and Book Talk, so I like to start with asking everybody what they're reading at the moment and what they happen to be drinking at the moment. Um, I have the French press going, and I just started Holly by Stephen King, um, and it's kind of a bumpy start, but um, too early to tell what's going on with that. But um, let's go over to Alan. Alan, what are you uh, what are you drinking? What are you uh, reading at the moment? That I'm always drinking coffee or Coke Zero <laughs> um, or water with pink, which is Mio. <laughs> And I'm currently reading um, Relics, which is the newest novella by K.J. Parker in his Under the Skin collection. I've had it for forever, and I like his epistolary stuff, so it's another epistolary novel like Purple and Black. And I'm also, after that, I'm reading Servant of the Empire because I have to, um, you know, I, I'm running a read-along and haven't read the second book. <laughs> and also, currently, I'm writing slides from ancient Greece from prehistoric to Hellenic times. Cause I, I haven't taught the first half. I haven't taught the Peloponnesian war. Like I've in my classical studies classes, there's two sections. I have, I have Philip and Alexander, um, which I've taught the last two years. Uh, so it's been three years since I taught Peloponnesian war and the stuff happens before. So I'm just kind of updating my slides. So I'm up to date on your read along. I finished mistress last night. So. You are better than me. <laughs> like, good. It, was it, and, was it good? I, I, it's, it's remarkable. I, I, I tweeted yesterday, I have to redo my top 10 list. I loved it. Um, which which I, book do you think is the best? <sighs> You're going to say book one. It's going to be sad. because No, sad. no. Um, I mean, it's kind of a toss up between two and three. Okay. That, that gives me hope. Yeah. Yeah. But I did, I gave off all, all three of them five stars. I really liked the setting. I really liked, um, yeah. characterization. I liked Mara and just her whole journey. So, um, cool. Yeah. Well, let's go to, uh, the new, the newest Papa Gwen. Ed, <laughs> what are you drinking and what are you, uh, what are you reading at the moment? I have a cup of hot coffee today. My very, very needed since I am now a, a Papa Gwyn, the new one. Uh, coffee is my diet, <laughs> a necessity. My, my food, my everything at the moment. <laughs> and I'm reading Vinland Saga, the, the manga. At the nice. Moment. So Murphy Napier and Philip's videos recommending that. So I had to had to jump on in. And the awesome thumbnails for those videos as well. That Philip yeah. is just brilliant. Philip is legendary with he those is. thumbnails. They're, they're killers. <laughs> they are. They are. And I've got, um, I've got a coffee as well. Yeah, you just have to do it, don't you? And is I'm that a latte, that one? latte? Yeah, it is a latte, latte, actually. So, yeah, there we go. And then I'm reading The Prophet of a Dan by, as we were just talking about, Dr. Philip Chase himself. And, uh, yeah, loving that at the moment. And I'm also listening. Are you to... reading it with Alan's voice? In, in my mind, mind yeah. I'm just hearing Alan kind of narrating it. Well, I'm <laughs> looking at it in a strange way. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, listening to uh, your audio narration of it, Alan. Come coming soon i'm coming soon tm i promise it is coming it is coming soon and the good thing the good thing is that after the first one is out you will not have to wait a ton of time for the second and third one they will follow closely Brilliant. um it is just this first one that is giving me yeah yeah but well, whenever it comes out we will be waiting because uh, okay. i already want to reread it and so yeah. yeah well just picture sequara sounding like this they raven we got to go. Got to stop the evil prince. The yeah, yeah, Terminator. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, we must get to the job of the raven. <laughs> That's now <laughs> <exactly, laughs> looking out ahead. Even better already. That's exactly how I picture Sakara. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, I haven't read Prophet yet, but I'm waiting till Return comes out. So I'm going to read nearly back to back the second and third books but yeah i really enjoyed the first one but yeah you're right philip's thumbnails he went from probably like the worst in booktube to like the best in booktube because his are just <laughs> legendary at this point yeah, yeah. it's so what we aspire to be it is, it is now isn't it yeah right yet, um, profit yet because i'm having to reread um the way of a dan so like you know i'm like yeah. i'm gonna have to reread this anyway like so i'm just gonna yeah. wait and you know, 
Rick, I'm just, just going to. Gonna record it blind. I'm not even gonna read properly. I'm just gonna record it blind. That's what that's what uh, Baldry does with his uh, with his books. Travis Baldry. Really? That's he, really? uh, yeah, wow. he cold, he apparently cold cold records. Not now. I cannot do that. There's a zero percent chance I can do that. But I will probably read a chapter and then record it. Read a chapter and then record yeah. it. Yeah, um, it's easier to remember if I just like do it right afterwards. You know what I mean? Mm. So yeah, yeah, so. yeah. So do you have a recording studio or you just do this at home or how are you, uh, how are you recording those? I have a closet. I have a large closet. And so my clothes and my wife's clothes, mm. like my clothes are on one side, hers on the other side that serves as like, like, like sound absorber. Yeah. And, and then one wall has like a huge, like vanity. Um, and so drape blankets over that and then behind to just have blankets and it's, and I set up a table and my laptop and a mic and stuff. And yeah. That is the setup. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> uh, there won't be an Iris appearance today. She's at, she's at my house. I'm at Will's at the moment. But uh, but keep your eyes peeled on Twitter. I'm sure I'll put another photo up soon. Hope you're doing well, Evie. <laughs> well, when do you head to university? I remember you talking about uh, that. Uh, yeah. Two weeks. Uh, Friday gone. So 12 days. So not long now, and then yeah, um, we're heading off. I don't know why you're smiling because you're abandoning us. All, <laughs> so that's nice. Of you. I'm selfish, aren't yes. I? Yeah. <laughs> I'm blown away that you have have to read Tolkien. I know it is. I mean, I guess that's if they insist, I'll just have to do it, won't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I definitely I mean, haven't read the Children of Fear in four or five times already. Definitely yeah. not. Yeah, I read that one once. I I enjoyed it. It felt. Um, of the three great tales, it felt the most complete of the three. And um, I mean, I think it's Petrick that calls that his favorite Tolkien, which is interesting. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's that's not what I had to read in English. <laughs> I think we all want to take Philip's fantasy novels class. Yeah, we all do. I can't listen to Philip bloviate for you know, <laughs> an hour and 15 minutes twice a week. <laughs> He'll be playing your narration soon and be like, I'm okay, I'm, okay with, I'm, I'm okay with that. Actually, actually, <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll go to that class. I don't actually want anybody to listen to it. Like, actually, <laughs> I, I don't like, I'm just don't, like, I don't want anybody to listen to it. Like, be like, wow, Alan, you suck. I'll be like, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, we're all going to listen to it. <laughs> I know, like, just watch the first one's gonna have like booming sales and then no one's gonna buy the second one <laughs> terrible story five stars performance one <laughs> uh, like i can't i i am not the kind of person like as an author if i was an author like i am not the kind of person that could look at reviews like i like i just know like i j look i can get 99 really nice comments and i'm only going to replay the one that tells me that i suck and that, like, you know, my parents should have yeeted me into a like a ravine like the Spartans when I was born. Like that one will just like replay, uh, and it doesn't matter. There's 99 other ones. Yeah. So I do not have the temperament to um, to look at reviews. So I'm just. You gonna... must have some good YouTube comments. What was the one we got recently? We someone said um, that we look like the real life Beavis and Butthead. Yeah. Which... <laughs> Oh and do you know what? I I couldn't think of a comeback. I thought, fair enough. That is the, the, the most accurate yeah. thing. It's actually, and now I can't unsee it. I yeah. don't ever want to watch our videos again. That's hilarious. Wow. wow. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll leave that uh, to people to decide. Comments are good stuff. They're good stuff. I'm gonna have to stop my Discord from linking me. Like, hey, Alan, look at this person who hated you. I'm gonna be like, stop. <laughs> like, don't, like, I don't want it. Like, I don't want to see that. Like, yeah. when my students tell me, like. Hey, you know this kid hates you. I'm like, wh like, what good did you just do telling me that this child I teach hates me? Like, like, where qui bono? Like, to whose good did you just do that? <laughs> you see that on you see that on Twitter all the time, where someone will do a negative review and then someone else will tag the author. I'm like, why would you? Why would you do that? I just I don't understand. <laughs> hey, this person hates you. Like, oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, read it. Yeah. You've got to do what Jabba Crombie does and post those negative reviews because they are they are hilarious. Yeah. His yeah, I mean, Twitter is the best, I tell you. <laughs> He's just so funny. <laughs> yeah. I haven't I haven't seen the interview. He did an interview with Sanderson on Daniel Green's channel. I need to watch that. Because yeah, yeah. Abercrombie's yeah, always just watch TV for me. 
Yeah, he's, he's always he's on good brilliant. form, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, just so witty and hilarious and yeah. What are we reading these days? Oh, we went around at the very beginning, Evie. <laughs> hey, you uh, missed it, Evie. Evie, were you, is is are you doing the Empire trilogy with us? I don't know. No, she didn't like the she didn't like the first one enough to continue. Gotcha. I mean, she liked the first one, but not enough to continue. Yeah, I know. Derry was excited that I loved it because she loves it too. So, um, but yeah, I I really enjoyed it. I feel like it was the one. The one series in the 80s that when I was reading in the 80s, I missed. And I'm kicking myself because it might be the best thing I've read from that <laughs> decade. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, it's it's one of the ones that's it doesn't have the tropes. You know, it's just uh, it's I mean, I love David Eddings, but, you know, he published a formula later in life where he's like, here are the 10 things that I use to put in every fantasy story. And then you like, dude, you just gave away your your secrets and that you're totally formulaic. But it worked for him and I enjoyed yeah. some of his works, but yeah, it's, uh, it was nice to, nice to read something that didn't have any of the tropes and just felt so different for sure. Mm, yeah. yeah. I love kind of like the, the tone and atmosphere of kind of traditional fantasy, but as he said, it's nice to have something quite fresh as well, isn't it? Because with the traditional aspects, a lot of those tropes that we have seen so many times are also there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't think the tropes are necessarily bad. I like how modern, modern authors are good at subverting them. I mean, Abercrombie, top of the list in my mind but yeah yeah for sure it's i mean i think we like fantasy because of the tropes we like the wizard and we like the the farm boy orphan yeah whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's our safety it's like, there, isn't it yeah exactly yeah. they're tropes for a reason aren't they because they're enjoyable but it's about finding kind of new ways to explore that yeah absolutely i'll jump so, from me first law how he takes those tropes and subverts the more your expectations just come crashing down it's just masterful yeah yeah no i felt the second book of his when i find when i got to it that's when i finally understood when we we faced a quest that was let's just say concluded a lot differently than i was used to i said okay this is mm -hmm. this is what this guy's about yeah okay, no, i'm on board <laughs> yeah yeah alan you're never gonna be fan i don't know if i've seen you talk about him i much. finished blade itself <laughs> uh, i mean it, took me, it, it just took me so I started Blade itself multiple times on audio, mm. and there are just too many names and places for me to keep track of only on audio. And so about two thirds, of, no, about halfway through, I stopped and I read like a big chunk of it. Uh, and so like the last, like, I guess, I guess I read like a quarter of it, like physically. And yeah. so then I was able to listen to the last, no, no, I, I I read the last quarter of the uh, of the book and enjoyed it much more. Um, not that Stephen Pace is bad, but that if I don't even know how the name is spelled, I it's, I, I can't I can't follow along. I, I don't no. know. I have no grounding. Um, and I enjoyed it. I would have enjoyed it more if I hadn't taken six months to do it. Um, <laughs> but I didn't. Do it. And I am. Usually it takes. Yeah. <laughs> it just it took forever. Um, so I am going to continue. I don't know when, but I'll, I am going to continue. Mm. Um, yeah, it was, it's good. I mean, it's, it's good. It's not like, I mean, it's, it's fine. Like it's, it's good. I just, it's not privilege. Yeah, Alan. It's not like, I don't know how anybody reads the blade itself for the first time. And it's like, this is the best book I've ever read. Like, cause <laughs> it's not like it's, it's good. Like Abercrombie has really good character voice which is, I mean, that is exceptional, um, where all, they all sound different, which is excellent. But otherwise, I mean, okay, there's, there's, a, big, there's a big tower. I think the, the big thing that grabs me is the, I think you wouldn't be able to get through it if it wasn't for, for that grain of humor in there. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, no, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, no. <laughs> I didn't laugh once. <laughs> no, I definitely, I, I did, I did. I like, um, I did laugh with, uh, now I, now I can't remember anybody's name. Uh, Boaz, is that his name? No, Boaz. Boaz. Yeah. Yeah. Boaz. Yeah. What's his name? What's the wizard's Boaz. name? Yeah. Yeah. Boaz. 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 He talks, he talks to Logan the way I talk to my students. So I laughed at that. Uh, <laughs> he's mean, he's mean to him. So I, I enjoyed that. 
<laughs> Someone's gonna do it. The, the problem is that I don't I, like. I don't say that it's plotless. Like it does have a plot, and it's obviously one of these plots that is Blade itself was never meant to be a standalone. Like like many trilogies, yeah. where it's like I wrote this book. <laughs> oh, but then the publisher told me to write two more. Okay, um, so it's obvious that it's a it's a trilogy. Um, you know, that's one of the things I, I liked a lot about the Empire trilogy is that it wasn't basically one story told in three parts. Yeah. That it was three different stories and almost every book you got kind of a different villain. And I felt the same thing when I read Rift War earlier this year. I liked that each book was almost kind of its self-contained thing, even though there wasn't an overarching story. And I think a lot of modern authors, good or bad, tend to often just tell the big story just in three installments because there's fantasy and has everything's got to be a trilogy. Yep. Yeah. We, we love Glockta. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <He's> brilliant. <laughs> Bojanani, yeah. Glockta's fine. Bayaz is my favorite. And I like, I like Jazal, like, cause he's such a dork. Like, exactly. I love him. A dork. And I really liked West. And then I didn't yeah. like West at yeah. all. Like West was my favorite character. And then I don't like him at all. Yeah. I, I do no. I am no longer a West Stan. <laughs> so. West. <laughs> no, no, I felt the same way there. It makes yeah. me mad because I liked West. And now I'm like, well, yeah. I guess I don't like and West. Suddenly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> His arc in book two is just so good. I just, it's it's hard to top it. It's, yeah, there's so much to get into with Abercrombie and, and all of the, the individual sections and yeah. all their personal triumphs and defeats and all sorts. And, yeah, just so many good little bits, yeah. little details. So what's your favorite Abercrombie book? Go ahead. What's your favorite Abercrombie book? Mine? Um, Trouble with Peace. Mm. Oh, yeah, I love Trouble with that Peace. That battle at the end is just... Incredible. And what I loved so much about it is it ended, it had finality. And I knew there was another book, but I had absolutely no idea where the third book was going to go. Yeah. And that's hard to do on a book too. You know, so many books, you know, we talk about middle book syndrome. There was none of that. I mean, it was a huge ending. It was a final mm -hmm. ending, but it wasn't a final ending and you didn't know what was yeah. going. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. It could have been the finale, couldn't it? It was that epic and that kind of conclusive. And uh, you could see there's so many ways it could go from there that the opportunities had, it meant that you really had no idea what was going to be in the wisdom of crowds. Yeah. And I also love how um, just the scope, I mean, the Abercrombie himself said he kind of secretly wrote a nine book epic, how you just see some of the characters, their arcs go through all of it. And yeah. some characters you meet in the standalones finish in the second trilogy and um, I mean, you don't have to read it all, but it is gratifying for those of us that have read all of them that you get yeah. to see all these these stories continue all the way through. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good way of doing it, getting all those readers in. But yeah, Gorst will yes, always be my favorite character from the first Yeah, world. Yeah, Just absolutely. The of the heroes. And Stephen Pacey's narration as well of Gorst is, uh, is brilliant. Yeah, going through comments. <laughs> yeah, that's how we, I think we all feel about Wes that way. Yeah. Um, Giselle, I definitely like Giselle's arc over the trilogy, for sure. Yeah. And the way his uh, chin changes throughout. <laughs> <laughs> I love when he's looking at it, he's like, that is a noble jaw when he's looking in the mirror. And then it's his actual that he's just admiring himself. We've all been there, haven't we? <laughs> Speak for yourself. Yeah, I, I enjoyed Sharp Ends. A lot of people don't don't like it, but I thought some of those stories were fantastic. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. You're always good. I mean, a, a short story collection is only as good as the as the worst or the best story, really. Isn't yeah, it? So, yeah. I think there's three that I absolutely love. There's a few that is they're not. I, I'd say the, the, the top level, but as I said, three of them are just brilliant. Yeah. And I love the kind of the depth and kind of the questions they answer as well. Yeah. Well, they're all they're all good fun. Yeah, and it feels like they weren't done for the sake of it, just to kind of have that character. Feels like it really does is quite important to their character. Mm -hmm. Like with yeah. Roxanne. definitely not one to skip. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a of a trilogy that has middle book syndrome now. Most trilogies, no, <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, I mean, I don't know. 
Maybe not. Maybe that's <laughs> not what I think of it. Past. Um, are there really how many trilogies are there nowadays? Aren't aren't most of them like just too many? Yeah, yeah, they're all twelve book series now. Or like, yeah. or twelve. Well, I think, I think four is the new is the new trilogy. Mm. Um, I think a lot of people think Well of Ascension has middle book syndrome. Um, I like Well of Ascension. Mm. Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't. I wouldn't call that middle book syndrome. Enemy of God definitely does not have middle book syndrome. They definitely uh, did no. not. <laughs> um, I'm looking at my trilogies here. I wish there was more duologies. I That's agree. something I'd really like to see more of. Yeah. Okay. Risen Kingdoms is also. I agree. I agree. Um, neither does uh, neither does Cicero. Cicero doesn't have middle book syndrome. I think. I, I think the third book is the worst. Yeah, I've only read the first two. I need to finish it. Oh, so it's so good! Behind me, read along. Yeah, I was on it's track. So from there. Yeah, I've just dropped it. I don't know You're why. You're actually behind Alan. Yeah, <laughs> you know it's bad when I'm behind <laughs> Alan. Um, Cicero's so good. Like, I did not... I don't like... I don't really like Cicero because no. he's just like... He is the... He, he's just like the the pettiest person on the planet. Yeah. He's He's... Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. But you're so just has such self esteem issues um, and annoying. And I love yeah, Julius yeah. Caesar. And this se- this series made me sympathize with Cicero and not like Julius Caesar. And that's almost impossible to do. And he just did <laughs> such a good job. Um, oh, and, you know, I used to read, I used to read Grisham and the legal and political thrillers. Like I used to read those. And I'm sitting here reading yeah. freaking. Uh, Imperium, and I'm just like, holy crap, it's an ancient Rome, like John Grisham novel, like Cicero having the courtroom scene, and it, oh, just so good, good. yeah, just good. I like, yeah, he's a fantastic character, isn't he? He's how fixated he is, but it makes him blind to so much, yeah, else. and how just like how incredibly imperfect Cicero is, like, he's just yeah. you root for him, and then it's like, man, why you gotta be this way, and and also <laughs> has an inability to not sing someone if someone leaves an opening like he can't yeah, like, he, yeah. He's he's can't not, back. not to insult somebody if they left an opening because yeah he's so arrogant Ugh, yeah. it's good it's good stuff. and those like courtroom scenes as he said it's like it's as satisfying it feels like the adrenaline is like a huge like finale battle in like a fantasy series and yeah. knowing what happens like the fact that he can do that when you know the outcome is brilliant yeah. It's like a Cornwell with um, with Arthur. Like we know how we know what happens. Like yeah. the story of Arthur. Like and the fact that I'm still like, oh, it's Arthur, it's Arthur it alive. So yeah, Final let's video. talk about Lancelot <laughs> in <laughs> Warlord Chronicles. <laughs> Must we? Oh, I, I love I, I love that that characterization of Lancelot because you could see how that turned into the legends i mean that was my one of my favorite things of that was seeing how he just flipped that on its head and you could see oh yeah that's that could turn into this yeah because playing bards and it just shows it's like and it feels so bad because like he wins obviously it's not like he was actually like that but it's bird of cornwall just makes it feel like lancelot wins and he's now known as this hero and it feels unjust me and Will regularly been... say coward child <laughs> to, to each other, other yeah. yeah. But you're like, you're arguing, Lancelot, yeah. obviously. <laughs> yeah. I've never liked Lancelot, even before I read. I've, in, in any time in Arthur, I've never. The only Lancelot I like is John Cleese from um, <laughs> from Monty Python. Uh, I hate Lancelot. And this yeah. book, or this series, I hate him even, even more. Like, mm. the... The fact that in this he just has a better PR, he, like he's got a better PR department. Yeah, yeah. It's just, like it's just it's just enraging. Like it makes me yeah. so angry. Oh, yeah, I, I hate Lancelot. I hate Lancelot. Though, I mean, Arthur pisses me off half the time too. I need him to I get know, it. Yeah. Really, the enemy of God. I uh, can't say what happens, obviously, but he does something, and I thought oh, I can never forgive Arthur. <laughs> I almost stopped reading, for, and then I was like, no, it's too good. I have to read more. It's hard right. to, to write a good Arthur, I imagine. I mean, even re- reading Giles Christian's series, I, Arthur's so annoying. He's so annoying. And Lancelot, too. Yeah. It's, uh, well, it's great are you talking about the Tristan and Isolde section? For, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, 
That hurts Jonathan me. Keeble's narration of that section is brilliant. Like, yeah, I need brilliant. to listen to the audio. Yeah. Couldn't do a reread really soon. It's so good. Jonathan Keeble is, is phenomenal. And when, you know, Dervil suffer, suffers tragedy, like Keeble's voice breaks, and then I was just gone. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Who's your favorite character of that trilogy? Who? Oh, oh, who's my favorite character? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, if if not Dervil, Merlin, because he's mean. Yeah, he's <laughs> so it's brilliant. Be Merlin, he? Yeah, always. he's so brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> he's just mean. Though Merlin makes me mad too, because I'm like, Merlin, yeah. would you please help? Would you please <laughs> stop with your dumb, <laughs> druid <laughs> crap and help? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's but, the brilliance. It's like they are infuriating. They feel like real people because of that, don't they? But it's not to the point where it's like it's making you angry at the book. It's yeah. you're just so rooted in the story. And those books are so good. It's when Bernard Cornwell didn't have a formula. So yeah. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. well, he even said himself, it's the most fun he's had writing books. Mm. So that's his favorite trilogy that or Must series. Be fun writing something original. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Merlin's voice is fantastic too. Like it's oh, so good. He's just so condescending while being incredibly doddering and yeah he's oh he's so good he's so mean to Durville. <laughs> <laughs> some of the lines are just brilliant i haven't started watching the program yet i wasn't i wasn't mad on oh i, I, I haven't heard good things i no. haven't either like be, yeah. why must why must all of these 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 people making adaptations turn them in to generic like generic 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 show with mm -hmm. generic everything and yeah. like stop like what if you included what made the books great or mm -hmm. a, a, or video game adaptations what if you included what people liked about the video game instead of getting rid of all that and making it generic action movie yeah just like this so mm -hmm. i also have not yet watched it because i looked i watched the trailer and i was like oh mm -hmm. no <laughs> yeah. Exact same, yeah. It's like they oh. thought, how many tropes can we shove in here? It's actually and impressive also, they can make something so amazing so bad. It, like... it, it, I think this baffles me more than any other adaptation because it's not actually the Winter King. It's Arthur abroad. It's the North Queen. Yeah. It's just not not anything Bernard Cornwall did. So hold on, That's... is it? So it because it's all about Arthur. Devil was like in the trailer for like three seconds. I didn't even see him. Didn't even see him. Yeah. Didn't even see him. I, I didn't realize it's only because someone put on Twitter, oh, that's the actor for Devil, and he's in one shot. I was like, oh. Well, you're actively searching for the main character. It's a bit worrying, isn't it? Yeah. And it's all about Arthur in this side story, which isn't even part of the books, where if you're mm. getting rights for an adaptation for a series that is so loved. So it's, you... not, it's not even about the Winter King. No. I know. Why? Why? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I hate that. Well, Mike had a real good video on this a couple of weeks ago, but I hate the I hate the arrogance of all of these Hollywood or whatever studio writers that always think like, oh, that, this is good, but but I can do better. Yeah. And the, yeah. it's just the lack of respect for the source material. It just why are you adapting the source material if you're not going to respect the source material? They do yeah. have an imperative from the studios to make it appeal, as appealing to as wide an audience as possible. I do understand that. But the problem is, is when you take something that has a fan base and you remove what the fan base liked about it, well, now you've pissed off the fan base. And the problem is you've made something so generic that the gen pop isn't going to like it either. So now you've pleased nobody. Yeah. And you at least could have pleased half of an audience. And yeah. maybe if it was exceptional, other people like the gen pop would come and hear about it and come see it and maybe they would find something special also but this watering down mass appeal like to where there is nothing special or unique or different about any of it other than the actors sometimes like it, like it no one likes it nobody stop it's yeah not infuriating yeah yeah, yeah take, and take the witcher that i mean i'm i don't like the witcher books at all um i like the games the the woman the woman who wrote it has just thought oh can I'll do a better job we're just gonna plonk the Witcher on there and just it just really blows my mind and it's like we were talking about if Dad ever gets a you know a film deal or a TV deal we were like no <laughs> yeah. they would just destroy it yeah yeah you will do exactly what they, they'll do exactly what they did with Winter King here is it yeah. will be the most generic like Celtic looking 
yeah. generic, generic thing. And they'll make, you know, little, or I know, no, I guess Corbin will be the main actor, but he'll be the hottest actor they can find. Maybe he'll have some acting chops, but he will be the best warrior guaranteed. Like Corbin will be able to like take down everybody by himself. Yeah. Um, if there are any other named characters, yeah. it'll be just generic Viking show. Yeah. Just like Winter King is. Yeah. I'm I'm at the point where I actually don't want my favorite books adapted anymore. Yeah. Because it just seems like the track record is so bad at this point that I don't want them to ruin it. It's, that's the thing, unless isn't it? again you do a Joe Crombie and you write the screenplay yourself or you know alongside someone else. That's the only way you. But he's that is I think what he's I'm had to change. For. From what I've heard, he's he's you know he's still changing a fair bit, but at least yeah. he's in control a little bit of what he's. No changing, yeah, because so. it's fine. You understand things have to be changed, like as Alan said, like it ha you need to make it maybe wider to obviously a wider audience. But mm -hmm. there's a line, isn't there, where you're still keeping yeah. the heart of the book and the story. And you've got to pare things down because the media, like the medium, requires it, you know, like yeah. you can't. You can't do everything. So you got to combine here, like maybe a couple side characters you just combine, give, you know, this guy's wise, that guy. Like all of that is fine. And reworking something like that's why adaptations are good is because or should be good is because it's a different look at this, this thing that we like that has to be presented in a different way because of the medium. <laughs> but they, they, they don't do any of that. They just like strip out and... <laughs> Like stuck the marrow from it, and then like here, here's some lifeless husks. Look at how look at how good our <laughs> CG or costumes are. Ah, yeah. Ooh. Brings the power. There you go. Yeah, 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 exactly. At least try and find people passionate. You know, yeah. like we're watching. I watched the behind the scenes of the Lord of the Rings recently, and you can just see how Peter Jackson is in love with Lord of the Rings. You know, and the source material. He wants to do it justice, and that's. I mean, that's all you need to find someone like that who actually wants to do something because they're passionate about it rather yeah. than just think, oh, I can, I can write a better version of that. The problem is no one's going to give them any money. Like, yeah. like the studios are going to be like, no. And, and I don't understand why, why they can't learn that this is losing you money. Like, yeah. why would you not do something different? Because like in mission impossible, Indiana Jones, all these huge blockbusters that have just come out, have lost so much money for these studios. What if y'all made something good? Like, mm. what if? What if y'all put even, like, a high schooler's effort into doing this instead of, like, high schoolers, like, throwing this together the night before? Because that's what it looks like. like yeah. But time travel in Indiana Jones? Are you kidding? Like, like are you <laughs> kidding me? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> and no one's impressed. No one's impressed with octogenarian Harrison Ford running around like, oh, wait up. Let's catch the train. Hold on, Marcus. Like, <laughs> like just stop. stop. It's just lazy. It's lazy. It is so lazy. So lazy. Hey, let's get caught up on some <laughs> Uh, Sam asked Alan, why does no one talk about the great coats anymore? <laughs> because there hasn't been a new one in a while. He yeah. still hasn't released the next one in the series. Um, and, uh, and I don't know. I, it, most, most De Castell conversation is around, um, the spell slinger and Argosy series, which I have not mm -hmm. finished yet. Um, because he keeps yeah. releasing new Argosy books. Um, yeah. I'm planning on rereading great coats soon because it's just, it's just so good, but I need to finish spell slinger and the argosy books um and malevolent seven was good too um yeah. so he just has not yet gotten the next great code book where he wants it um so i hope it comes out i hope it comes out soon because i i drop him a line like uh with some regularity being like what is up when so excited <laughs> about the next great code book. where do we stand um so i don't know people should talk more about the great Codes. i think they're good i think it's an excellent series yeah. yeah, yeah, Sebastian's a great guy as well. He's uh, yeah, the bromance of the core is just it's, oh, it's basically sure. unrivaled, yeah, for sure. And Dick's still so nice, he's so nice, yeah, he is, yeah, he's, yeah, he's a great guy. He was like, out. when we when we started going to like conventions, he was one of the first authors we met, and he yeah. was just so kind and such a laugh as well. So funny, so witty. It's yeah. the humor of the great coats, but it's just him, 
Yeah. There is none. Like, I wish I was in Canada or the UK where authors actually that like actually go to these things and I can go see an author that I know. But here in America, they don't ever do it in outside of like, hey, I live here. I'm going to go to a bookstore where I live. It's like, well, none of you live in Florida. So. Have, have you guys yeah, heard of this one that Matt I recommended? I haven't yeah. heard of it. No, I, no. I haven't heard of it. Um, yeah, I just, guy. Right. yeah, I just wrote that one down. Um, I know, Ed and Will, you guys have read this one. I have yeah. not. Yeah. Series. I haven't either. Yeah, do you know, I I like The Last Kingdom. I think I read it when I was about, well, I started to read it. I was 13, 14. Very impressionable age and probably the right age to read something with a main character you know coming of age style mm. but uh i think as i've become older and i've read it i haven't enjoyed them as much and i wouldn't binge them at all because you do spot the formula pretty quickly the first three books are a bit more original but uh yeah as you go on it's not his best work i'd say you know start with the warlord chronicles mm. and then if you if you like viking age stuff then then go for it but uh yeah don't binge it but i would say utrid is an exceptional character and also, even though you kind of know the formula, if you, I just broke it up that I read one installment every other month, and that was great. I because... think Patrick deleted that, and he said, "I never want to read this yeah. again." <laughs> so yeah, it depends, doesn't it? But I felt like for me, it was long enough between each one that it wasn't infuriating me yeah. that I was kind of similar formula. It was more that oh, I was glad to be back with Utrid and the kind of cast of main characters. And every book, I'd say, even though it's a formula, there is a scene or two that I just think is exceptional. And uh, it really stands out quite vividly. So last book's the best. Yeah, last that's the only right. one I've not read yet. What? I know. I've so I've worked so hard. Books down. I know, and, and then I've not the best read one. the final one yet. Yeah. So I need to do that. Well, that's good to know. I've read I've read about a dozen by Cornwell, but I haven't read any of his two biggest series. I haven't read any of the Last Kingdom. I haven't read any of the Sharp books either. I think I think his India trilogy and in Sharp is just. I mean, it's just it's just really good. The problem with sharp is that it suffers from the same uh formulaic thing that um that mm -hmm. they're saying that <clears throat> the last kingdom series does uh and they are the sharp books are of varying quality like mm -hmm. some of the ones that are earliest written are i mean it just it just feels different than the ones like the the first three chronologically the india trilogy uh were not the first three written but they're so good and i like sharp like trying to climb his way um, from a ranker to an officership. And Cornwell himself has said he regretted getting rid of Obadiah Hakeswill partway through the series because he was unable to recreate, like he like he never made a better villain. Like like yeah. he, like so he regrets having and and yeah, like like what are you doing? Like why would you why would you get rid of Hakeswill? I, I still to this day don't know uh, a villain that I that is just begs you to despise. There is <laughs> no redeeming quality of Obadiah Hakeswill. None, none. Like he's so just blah, he's so repulsive that Sarah Sarah could barely even finish Sharp Tiger because of just how awful Hakeswill is and the and the the chaos he causes and. Oh, I just hate him. I hate him. He's worse than Lancelot. And that's saying that's that. saying a lot. It, um, Lancelot, Lancelot he my gave him a run for his money. He gave him a run for his money. But Obadiah Hakeswill <laughs> is absolutely monstrous. Just the monstrous of petty, petty men. <laughs> they're the most infuriating yeah. and they're the yeah, they're the best villains. Would you recommend reading Sharp chronologically or the date they were published? I 100 percent recommend reading them in chronological order because mm. otherwise okay well okay sharp starts out i think he starts out in sharp's rifles the first one he's a he's already an officer he's lieutenant maybe lieutenant sharp at that point and then you got to jump back to when he was you know a ranker um yeah um and it's just no i would just read them in order uh, in yeah. order of like with sharps the beginning of sharps career age, yeah. yeah plus plus you read the first three of the india trilogy which is just wonderful and then if you're tired of it you can just stop there and 
you know, have had a great sharp experience. And yeah. the character of Arthur Wellesley is so brilliantly written too, because we all know what, who Wellesley is. We know, you know, um, that he's the guy that stops Napoleon, but he's not particularly likable. He's actually kind of a huge douche, mm. but really capable. So you, you like Wellesley while at the same time being like, man, I don't, I'm not really. Have y'all seen the freaking trailer for this new Napoleon movie that's coming out? Do you know yeah. there's no Arthur Wellesley in it? What? There's no Wellesley. Oh, that's what I said. How are you have a movie with Napoleon with no Wellesley? We're... No Arthur Wellesley. Nick needs, go, needs to stop. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Like, seriously. Like, how do you have a movie about it? It's because it's about all oh, the, the torrid love affair between Josephine and Napoleon. We, oh my gosh, least interesting part of Napoleon. No Wellesley? Really? What? That <laughs> gave really stark holders. Well, you might as well do the Warlord Chronicles without Arthur. Go yeah, for it. Yeah, why not? <laughs> there right. you go. Let's make a movie. Let's make a movie about the Punic Wars, and let's just uh, let's just take out. Um, like, it'll be about Hannibal, and we just won't we won't talk about Scipio Africa. <laughs> <laughs> let's just take him out. Unbelievable! That is yeah, that's ridiculous. Dumb. <laughs> Ed, Ed Francois has a good question in the chat. There is Warlord better than Boudica? Nothing is better than Boudica. So I have not read Boudica yet, and I'm very. I'm I'm actually scared for you to read it, Alan. To be honest, because I am in love with this series, and I uh, you might you, there are some things you might hate, but uh, there are some is things the you should love. Or just just um dreaming. My me. favorite is book one, but it is all amazing, and I haven't cried as much dreaming in a series me. since Faith in the Fallen. Mm -hmm. And my favorite is book three, so it's kind of mixed. I'm kind of like, will I root for the Romans? Do you know? Like, I oh, really. Oh, the, 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 what's do you know done what? so brilliantly you, is you. <laughs> Guys, like you can't root for anyone. I can't. Don't re don't rebel. Don't <laughs> don't rebel. Like <laughs> don't conquer. Oh, yeah, don't conquer. Maybe. <laughs> Do you know what? It's, uh, the Romans are done so well. Whereas it, uh, it's just well, I've so not, not read, I've not read them done so well. Like you, there are both sides. It's, it's there's a good. Point. Not, there's... It's not just a clear cut like Boudicca. No, the, the oh, no, 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 no. oh, that's exciting. There's yeah. people you hate yeah. on both sides, and there's people you adore on both sides. Yeah, and that's what like I feel my heart just like in pain as you know oh, that the I'm people you love are just gonna just. And come most of the time, you know, I mean, also we know it's gonna happen, but like you can predict what's gonna happen <laughs> at the end of the book. But when it gets there. It's just awful. Next, it's all right. Next awful. year, next year, yeah. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read. There's what four? Yeah, yeah. do yeah. it. I'll, I'll read. We'll it do a read along. We'll do a big chat. We'll we'll read it again. I'm yeah, we will. <laughs> I was sold when uh, I, Ed. I don't know if it was you or Will that com compared Manda Scott to Robin Hobb. So I was immediately <laughs> interested in reading that one. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna read it. Oh, it's really fine. beautiful, like in a way that it's not over the top or purple, but it's just really immersive. I think it's her relationships, the, the way she writes characters of, of all, you know, all types mm. and all backgrounds. And she just finds ways for you to connect to everyone. That's why, you know, you you root for the Romans yeah. as much as you do for the Celts. But, and it's yeah. probably the most immersive historical fiction series I've read in terms of kind of experiencing the culture and feeling like yeah. it really is unique. So... There are a series of like Roman like murder mystery novels, right? The SPQR books by yeah. John Maddox Roberts, I think, and yeah. they're dumb. Like they're dumb, they're, they're dumb books. I mean, especially if you know like the first century BC, it's like like the second one's called the Catiline Conspiracy, and the mystery is, and I'm just like, what? Like it's Catiline, like <laughs> what? what? Um, but I tell my kids to read them because the cultural information in there like experiencing like what it was like to be in rome at the time yeah. from you know just the the, the big lace to the religious festivals to the the houses and clothing like it is just it's the richest with cultural details of any roman historical fiction that i've read the the stories are stupid but it gives you it is such a good like 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 you're saying immersive look yeah. into into the time period so yeah. i recommend it for that not for the story the story is done yeah yeah immersion is so important because i mean con Egerton can write a really good you know action-packed book but the immersion is where i think he lacks and that's that always is a miss for me with con Egerton. uh when i was younger i didn't really care but now i'm a 
an amateur history buff, uh, I get upset with lots of things. And uh, the immersion is just so important. And I think that's what Boudicca does so well. I mean, the author really knows her stuff. And if she doesn't, then she's a really good liar. <laughs> So here we go. <laughs> Can you see the comment there? I think we, uh, we... <laughs> what massive fantasy, this is a good question for everybody. What massive fantasy authors have you not read yet? Uh, Robert I was Robert thinking... any, uh, Sanderson or, or, uh, Robert Jordan. Just that's two big ones. Yeah. yeah it I've doesn't read. sound like what I, would, what I would read at the moment. So mine is Erickson. Probably. Yeah, Oh, see, I think people, um, that we, we cheat. There's two of us, so it seems like we're kind of better read than we are because yeah. <laughs> we mentioned double the amount of books, and so, people forget which brother says which. Yeah, so, so they like, then just kind of yeah. combine us both, and it's like yeah. one person. That's fine. Our parents do that. So. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> right. Right. Mine, mine would be Mark Lawrence, I think. Mm. Mark I haven't read Mark Lawrence either. One. Yeah, mm. Mark I've Lawrence. Mark I've Lawrence. only read book one of Wheel of Time. I've never read any uh, Robin Hobb. I've only read Mistborn of Sanderson. Um, I've only read uh, Blade Itself of Abercrombie. So, yeah. So, yeah. There are many. Alan, you're the, you're the niche king. So, it's that is true. I mean, I, I just, I just want to like something popular. Like, I just <laughs> want to like something popular. Like, why can't I just like something popular? What is your problem, camera? <laughs> Just read Fourth Wing. You might like that. It one. didn't like what you were saying, obviously, Alan. I promise like, nice. I would not like Fourth Wing. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yeah, the Benicia Chronicles are fun. Matthew Hart. Yeah, I really enjoyed a, it. A good, uh, a good author. He's, he's very reliable. Um, yeah, he's not. I think he's writing a western next. Yeah. Do you, are you guys fa fans of westerns at all? I would say, Ed, my best book of the year so far. I just finished book sixty-eight. My best book of the year is Lonesome Dove. Right yeah. now. That's so, yeah. such good news. Yeah, I love it. I love, just love seeing people reading that now. It's just such a good read. And yeah. it was on half on the list for me. Yeah, it was. Like it was so. It was so hard to go in with like the high high expectations I had, and then the book actually met those expectations and even exceeded them. I mean, it's it's just remarkable. It it does everything really well. I mean, the immersive factor, the writing, and the characterization, I mean, Gus and Call are like legends in my mind, but even a lot of the, the secondary characters and their character arcs, I mean, um, I think when I talked about it, I talked about like, this is an epic fantasy set in the West, <laughs> you know, and that's what it felt like, just this big, huge, grand tale that's just yeah. important, you know. So that's that's my favorite so far yeah. this year. It's an unconventional read and, you know, there's there's nothing really that is that you can predict and it, it starts off as a as a comedy and it ends as a tragedy and it's just uh, a heartbreaking read but so much fun as well yeah i need to read the rest of them now uh the other three what was your favorite of the other three um i th I, I liked book one and two i haven't read the the last one yet um i don't know if i will but i think yeah i enjoyed number one and two enough uh i mean i think larry mcmurtry is a very good writer and I think I'll, pro I'll probably read anything that he reads, to be honest, but uh, that he's written. But uh, yeah, I think I think one and two are good. But number three just is like top 10 books of all time for me. Yeah, I have a friend that's real life friend that's from Texas. So he's read everything by McMurtry. And he's always telling me about this other one that I haven't read. And he's got such a back catalog, but it seems like um, he's pretty consistent as well. Yeah, yeah. And he's written a few popular screenplays as well he was yeah. right he was writing a screenplay because he passed away a couple of years ago didn't he i believe um but he was writing a screenplay about the kwana parker the last comanche chief and uh, that story is quite quite amazing um the story of kwana parker and he was writing a screenplay for some big hollywood production which would probably change the character but whatever <laughs> but maybe that that could have been good maybe one day what was the book about him was that um... uh, empire of the summer moon Yes, the, yes. The fiction, yeah. Yeah, that was that was so I love that and I love the I love the Shirley Parker story. Yes. Her part yeah. of it. Yeah. And um I'd also read a book called Tribe, um, nonfiction book at about the same time, where it talked about her as well, how you know, some of these kids that were kidnapped then enjoyed the community of being part of the Native American culture and just 
so immersive. And I lived in Dallas at the time, which is near where like Parker County is and everything. So it was very, uh, uh, very cool. Just kind of being there reading about that. Yeah. I would have loved to have seen that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hopefully it'll come out. Hopefully in the next few years or they'll start filming it, but it's, uh, it's on the horizon. Hopefully Did you make a lot of progress with it or. Yeah. I think he wrote a lot of it. Um, yeah. And they, they they signed up a director and, and stuff like that. So they moving further along, but, uh, but you never know really, do you? But mm -hmm. it would be, it's an amazing story and it, it would fit well in any kind yeah. of medium, I think. Well, yeah. And especially his late in life when he was, you know, kind of like this ambassador figure almost, you know? Yeah. yeah uh, he did so much and yeah, you know, he had so much wealth. And then when he died, he had basically nothing. He, and giving it all away pretty much but uh, yeah very very fascinating character um i've read grail quest have you guys read those yeah i've read that yeah i liked the it's interesting because there's a trilogy and then there's a kind of a fourth book 1356 yeah. and um i like that one the best and it kind of just peripherally has some of those characters but um i i really like book one i think when they went to scotland i I didn't expect it and I just, I don't think it paid off for me. And I think it was when I was in my kind of Cornwell hate reading season, <laughs> <laughs> which I did, but I'm over that now. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'll probably return to them. I think I'll probably listen to them at some point because I think Jonathan Keeble narrates those ones as well, um, I believe. But yeah, I, I liked book one. And then he did Agincourt, which is a standalone, um, which I didn't quite enjoy because, I think the main character of the Grail Quest and then Agincourt were two is basically it felt a bit like copy and paste really. But it's an interesting time period. Yeah, I I think that was my second Cornwell after Warlord. So it was kind of a book hangover type yeah. thing. I liked it, but you know, it obviously wasn't at the level of Warlord, but um I did enjoy them. I mean, I did like the all the, the stories of the archers. So Yeah, they're they're a fun group to be around. Although it was interesting finding out, so it was published in the UK, the name was Harlequin, right? The first yeah. book. Yeah. But they couldn't publish it in the States with that name because there's this series of like trashy romance novels. Trashy. In the Harlequin States. romance novels. Harlequin romance novels. So they called it The Archer's Tale over here, um, which is interesting. It's definitely, people would be very confused if they picked yeah. up thinking it was yeah. a romance novel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, yeah, lost his mind. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Funny, like, when, when dad first started writing, he like, he, you know, would go into a shop and you get chatting with someone and then they'd say, what do you do? And he'd say, oh, oh, I write fantasy, but lots of people took fantasy the wrong way. Mm. Like he was writing 50 shades of gray or something, that kind of thing. <laughs> but I was looking at him like, Oh, okay. Whatever you like, that's fine. And he had to then clarify, which yeah, just yeah, yeah. was a far more painful experience as well. <laughs> Alan, Evie and Anitha are, are, are uh, writing down your buddy reads for next year. I literally so. didn't say buddy read. They said buddy read. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> uh, Sun Eater. So I have not started Sun Eater yet. Cause I was trying to find the hardcover, but I backed the Kickstarter. So I'll start collecting those. But, um, um, Rockio was on Mike's thing yesterday when a bunch of us were hopping in and out and, um, he seems like a really cool guy. So I definitely want to read his, his stuff. I love his covers. Those covers are great. Yeah. And they're really good. Absolutely. Need more. Yeah. Western yeah. Fantasy need more. Just read the hunters by David Rag, which is essentially more Western. Um, that was really um, good fun. The, uh, the um, Raven's Mark trilogy by um, Ed McDonald, Black Wing, Raven Cry, Crow Fall is West has a Western feel to it. Yeah, um, I don't. That's like a great. Trilogy. That is a brilliant trilogy. Did you read it? Yeah, I love it. So good. I finally one finished of the first trilogies I I read for fantasy. It's, and, it uh, is quite yeah. good. Yeah. Um, my favorite Western is like I I like Butcher's Crossing by yeah uh, John Williams. John Williams. And then the Gunslinger by by Stephen <laughs> King. The first, the first saying, I need to read it like, yeah. if I'm a Western fan. Dark but, uh, Tower yeah. book. I I read the Gunslinger in high school the first time, and I did not like it. I'm like, what is this stupid book? And then I read <laughs> it again while waiting for Stupid Wizard and Glass to come out, and I was like, wait a minute, this book's really yeah. good. And so now I like it. <laughs> yeah. But I generally don't like the problem is I don't like I like westerns or fantasy books that have like a western like feel 
or mm. but I don't like westerns themselves because I don't care about buffalo or cows <laughs> or ranching like cattle the, drive. The, yeah, <laughs> things that are things that are often in westerns. Like I don't, I don't care about. Like I, I like duels in front of the OK o, OK Corral. Like I like yeah. you know meet at high noon and pew pew. But just the like. Less cows. I don't have I don't have the rugged American individualism spirit where it's like let's go west and make our fortune and tame the untamed. <laughs> like I don't care. Like just hang out in a town and you know shoot at each other. Um, so I like the, the the quick and the dead with Gene Hackman. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, but that's <laughs> and that's, the that's sisters fun. brothers. Well. That's it. That's a fun one. Yeah. Yeah, this, this I is love it. I, I love yeah, at least on on television. I love the um, I love sci fi westerns. Are you gonna say Firefly? Yeah, sure. Of course, I'm gonna say Firefly. <laughs> Fire! Oh my gosh, Firefly is the JFK of television shows. <laughs> if it had not been prematurely, if it did not have a premature death, it would have not have the reputation that it has. Oh yeah, you're probably right. Um, but it did, so <laughs> it does have yeah. the I there. watched it after the fact where all of my friends were like, Oh my gosh, Alan, you like you like Joss Whedon, you like Buffy. Oh my gosh, you have to watch Firefly. It's the best <laughs> thing you've ever seen. I watched the first episode, I'm like, okay. I mean, that's okay, it's good, it's fine. <laughs> oh, what about I'm like, no, I mean it's fine. That's that's what people do to Joe Abercrombie with me right now. Um people, <laughs> it's like, okay, guys, like Let's, let's let's pump the brakes. Does it too, make you want to read any of the <laughs> yeah. I'm not it's sure it's too many. It's fine yeah. if like there's a like there's a sole proponent like me, the niche king. Like that's okay. But when like I don't I mean I don't care about Buffalo or or, or bison, which everyone's correct. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Al's with me with Firefly. That's a that's a very shiny comment. Yeah. <laughs> I like Nathan Fillion, and I like Alan Tudyk, but it's fine. <laughs> uh, Mac is asking um, Ed and Will if you're going to do your do another Edan discussion with Philip. Yeah, yeah, just in the middle of arranging a chat about profit, uh, which would be cool. Yeah, hopefully I'm nearly next, done. Next, week. So, just waiting for Will. He's slacking. This is usually the way. Uh, yeah, it's all right, Will. You're a bit younger. You'll learn. It's fine. But uh, yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be good fun. Yeah, those are going to be good. So my my best book of the year was was uh, Lonesome Dove so far. What's everybody else's? What's the best thing you've read so far? Uh, I'm going to say a Western, True Grit. True Grit was so good. I haven't read that. I've seen I, – I know I've seen both movies. Hmm. Did it's you enjoy them? The John, William, the John Wayne ones a long time. I like yeah. the newest one a lot. Yeah. Yeah. They're, I mean, they're, both of them are very loyal to the books, but uh... – yeah, the book's great. Yeah. Charles Borges is a good writer. No, it's, it's, just, it's the character voices. Yeah. Just so unique, really leap off the page. Quite a short read as well. I think my favourite of the year has to be Panther in the Sky, uh, historical fiction epic about Tecumseh. The Did Shaw you read that this year? Shawnee Chief. Yeah, this year, I believe wow. so, unless this year's gone. Uh, but yeah, that was great. I think uh, you guys would definitely enjoy that. That's probably my historical fiction recommendation for the year. It's done, like, Alan, yes. Alan, what's your best so far this year? I mean, according to my running sheet that I keep, like every time I read a book, I stick it in in there above other stuff. It's Imperium, the first the first book of um. Oh, it doesn't count rereads. Not counting rereads, it's Imperium, um, the first book of the Cicero trilogy. Because I just haven't. I don't think I've enjoyed a book I've read that wasn't a reread more than that this year. So. That's a solid list right there. I'm reading um, Under Heaven in November. So I'm reading those, kind of that duology, November, December. I've, have any of you read GGK? I've read Tagala. I, I read oh. Tagala, and it was, it was, I think, to, to me, the worst thing I've ever read. I, I just, it really upset me. I'm sorry, Alan. It I was mean, just, it was I weird. Know. And it, it, I just felt uncomfortable. And it's really hard for me to feel uncomfortable. I just thought, this is just not for me. It was, uh, 
And I think it's it's one of those things where it's hyped up so much. And I was like, this is this is perfect for me. You know, I love historical fiction, love fantasy, merge them together with Guy Gabriel K. It's going to be uh, a match made in heaven, but uh, it wasn't, unfortunately. I've heard that's not. Uh, yeah, I might try him again. I, I might try it under heaven, but I really enjoyed Tagana, but it took me uh, like I, I read it, got to a specific scene where like it's just this big. They have corn, like husks of corn, as swords, and yes, it's based off a real thing, like a real like festival fertility thing, and I don't yeah. care. It was just so weird. But then I really listened to it up to that point with Simon Vance as the narrator, who's also fantastic. And I really, I ended up really, really enjoying it. The problem is there are two, there are two like pretty explicit sexy time scenes. And one is in like, like within the first like 20 pages. Mm -hmm. And it's so like just incredibly unnecessary. As is the second one. Neither one is neither one is necessary for the plot. Not, not not even a little bit. And I'm just like, what are you doing? Like, who told you? And I, to I imagine it? his editor was like, like, guy, you can't put this in. And he's like, no, we need this scene. We need these two scenes. Just no, you don't. Imagine you don't. that conversation. No, you, you don't really don't need it. It really it's, just creeped me out. Yes, like, I agree. Like, it, it's, ugh. if I hadn't, if it hadn't have been um, a book that, you know, one of my patrons had picked, I would have just put it down then and yeah. been like, this is not me. <laughs> so he's, he's known for that GGK, the, his random sexy time scenes. Uh, I, from what I hear, they're not all quite as egregious as the, the <laughs> one in Tagana where it's like, why is this here? And why is it so early? It's like, yeah. it's it's like an action scene and not in a good way. It was yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> different kind of action. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, the only one I've read so far is Lions of al Rasan, and I read that two months ago, and that's it seems that's one of the ones that's a better entry point than Tagana. But yeah, the, the, the sex scenes were not, didn't seem egregious or gratuitous, and they seem to make oh, sense. Read, read Tagana. That's a relief, yeah. <laughs> I will. It, it's on the TBR shelf over there, so uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll get to it at some point. But yeah, I, I really enjoyed kind of the marriage of that one it was basically set in me medieval spain and you even look at the map and you're like oh yeah that that looks like spain <laughs> and it was um so little was fantasy i mean there was just one aspect of one character that had a little bit of kind of magic to them but uh it really felt like historical fiction it was really immersive so yeah um yeah i definitely give him give him another shot um but uh, yeah, Jake Bishop has a great video about where to start. He said lines. Of he say oh, okay. Yeah. And then Bridger at the library ladder, he also has one and he talks about that one and um, song for our bun being kind of the other one. That's a good starting point, but um, yeah, I've enjoyed him so far. Definitely. Um, Mac is a GGK expert. So amazing world building, but weakest main characters are bun or that's, all the fun or better yeah. intros. Yeah, that's definitely yeah. true. The characters are, they are, they are Gary Stews. Like, like the main character is a, is a Wunderkind. And, <laughs> but I love, I just like the mythic quality of what's going on and the people just trying to reclaim a homeland that n literally no one remembers ever existed. Um, I don't know. I liked it a lot. But not that dumb yeah, crap. Cool, like, yeah. Yeah. That's a heck of a list there, Evie. Now, what are the what's the best book you've read? And Evie list seven, like <laughs> that's like, called cheating. Yeah, we met, um, we met Otessa Mosh Mosh Fake. Fake, um a few months ago, didn't we? Uh, so but, yeah, we've got Eileen. We need to read that. I've never heard of that one. What's that one about? I don't know. To be honest, I, I read Lap Vona, which is this kind of mm. mythical medieval folk strange tale, which is very weird, but uh, but written really well. And uh, and I think Eileen is more of a modern, contemporary contemporary story actually. Fiction, yeah. um, I think my missus read it actually. She said it's quite strange, but I think Otessa Moshfeg has quite a vivid and strange imagination. And she likes to make but... her readers feel uncomfortable. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, but she wants them to. It's like so. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. I, I've heard to. amazing things about Ken Liu and uh, the Veiled Throne and same. Uh, that series definitely high up on the list. And oh, an Assassin's Fate by Robin Hobb. What book? 
That was so my book good. of the year last year. Yeah, that's probably my. If I had to pick my favorite fantasy novel, that's probably it. I yeah. need to, I need to continue with Robin Hobb because I read the uh, Assassin's Apprentice twice. Yeah, I like I liked it enough both times, Reed but uh, I need Royal to Assassin. I need to do Royal Assassin. But so good. I'll get there eventually. I'll get there. Too, yeah, too it, it only get, it only gets better just the way it layers upon yeah. it. Yeah, the final trilogy as well. I was really worried going into it. I think Thinking. she is she writing more more Farseer at the moment. Is it far, more Farseer or? I think. Kind She's, she was writing sure. she's got a character from the final series that's definitely in the book she's writing right now oh, i won't say more than that for spoilers yeah. but um yeah i'm just happy she's writing i'm starting to explore the the her megan lindholm side of her output right now so yeah uh, how's that going it's well i've only read one of the novels i read wizard of the pigeons and it was one of those it was early in her career and it was one of those like i like thematically what she was trying to do but I didn't feel she quite did it. Okay. Uh, but I'm reading right now a collection of short fiction that's Lindholm and Hobb, um, which is interesting because they do write differently. But um, I'm enjoying it. I read I read one last night that was just a uh, just fantastic little short story. So um, yeah, she's become my favorite fantasy author. Period. So yeah. um, I will read everything she's written, and then I'll start reading Realm of the Elderlings again. I just love her writing style and how the characters just leap off the page. Have you read Live Ship yet? I haven't. <laughs> we'll love get, to we'll, that out, we'll get so much hate for saying he's he's the number one Robin Hobb fan, but he hasn't read Live Ship. I'd never <laughs> say number one, that, but I'm a huge Robin Hobb Did, fan. And what then... about the T-shirt that says number one? <laughs> yeah. Robin, Robin Hobb. We don't talk about that. Okay. <laughs> no, she's she's the best. Uh, oh, here's about Eileen. Disgusting woman at Cessler and co-worker set in the 60s. Okay. <laughs> I'll read it. Thanks, Evie. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's good, Mac. <laughs> yeah, those two guys, they're definitely um, kind of the major ambassadors for GGK. Mm -hmm. uh, well, like Alan with um, Long Price Quartet. I just watched this morning Joanna's review on that series, and I'm, I'd am i already had her on the list, but now there's at least like two of you telling me to read it so it's it's quite good daniel abraham is for me what um robin hobb is for you like i love daniel abraham's solo work i have not read any of the expanse um i mean i like sci-fi less than fantasy anyway and i'm going to read the expanse because i wanted to have read you know all the stuff that abraham's done but um i've read all of his solo fiction all of his solo fantasy um so far and i like it a lot yeah, what was the Ages of Ash? Is that Age of Ash? Age of, the the second book just came out, Blade of Dream. Um, so, yeah, the second one. I'm waiting, waiting for the third one, which is will hopefully, hopefully. Well, this is going to be another year. Dang it! Yeah, <laughs> well, there's too many people talking about Daniel Abraham, really. But uh, in, in no one ever talks. I don't understand. I don't. I don't understand it. I yeah. I do not understand why i'm the i apparently am the only one that can see anything in daniel abraham like i don't know why his space stuff like the expanse is i mean whatever whatever people like what they like have you had him on the panel before alan i interviewed him yeah i have an interview up with him that is about all three of his main solo fantasy series but there's non-spoiler sections mm -hmm. for the whole okay. thing um but it was it was really cool like that was one of my bucket list things to do on this channel was to be able to talk to Daniel Abraham. And yeah. so that was awesome. Oh, Alan, I have to thank you for two recent reads. So uh, Ghost on the Throne, loved it. That was fantastic. Isn't it good? James Rom is, is, is so good. Yeah, it was great. It was Because I don't really know much about that kind of period, but he did a great job of just kind of laying down that base knowledge, but it was really intriguing. And then also uh, th uh, Three Kingdoms Chronicles, loving it. Read the nice. first installments. I haven't gotten to read book two yet. So I've got freaking so good. <laughs> so I good. want to, I have got like the, when uh, read two books in August, two, two freaking books in August, I've got to pick up the pace two behind. And hey, there's the 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 you know, that we want to read. <laughs> and, and you've had like 50 read alongs that you've done, you know, committed that, to that, as well. that's the thing though. Like the only book I can read in, in a month is like, I read the read along book for the month. I only I'm one behind. So one back. And then I read like one other book that I want to read. 
And that yeah. is all I've had time for. And I'm trying time to. Is the enemy. Yeah. We do need to talk about Dynasty Warriors though, Alan, because it's just elite. I swear, so good. So why does nine suck? I'm hoping, please make <laughs> ten good again. Nine yeah. sucks. Yeah. Please, yeah. please let ten we be good. We were so hyped for nine, weren't we? we? And it came out, it's just, oh, no. no one wants to run around in a stupid open world where there's nothing to do. Just yeah, exactly. Me... It's just empty. Let me go. Give me submissions within the battle. Make the morale mean something again to where I have to kill the get the guard, the gate captains to stop the enemy troops from pouring in. I don't know why it, this, this drives me crazy with like Microsoft and every other company. Why do your new iterations suck worse than the old mm. iterations? Yeah, why yeah. are you iterating all the good stuff out? Like, well, let's change this. We got to make a change here. So let's just make it. No one asked for that. Nobody asked for that. If you're trying to court the people who don't like this game, they're not going to play it no matter what you do. So instead, court those of us who like your game, you dummies. Yeah. <laughs> Ten better be good. It better be good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm going well, to. We have to complain. Years, we, have to re we have to rebel, Alan. Now, now's, are we allowed Seriously, to rebel? I, revolt? I'm, I'm, I refuse to be. I'm not a yellow turban. I refuse to be one of the yellow <laughs> turbans. But yes, we can, we can stage a revolt. Are you guys Wei, Shu, or Wu? You're like the red, blue, or green. I've oh. gone through all phases. I've gone through it. Yeah. William, you're definitely uh, the green, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm a bit of a mix. I'm the way. All the way. All the way. I've gone back and forth between Wei and the Wu, but I've never liked the Shu. Stupid <laughs> Liu Bei and Guan Yu and Zhang Fei and heavens for, forbid uh, Jian Wei and yeah. his... I, I will make a land of benevolence. Shut up, <laughs> Jian Wei. Shut up. I hate yeah. the shoe. No one wants a land of benevolence ever. Sugar Leong is awesome, but mm. the rest of the shoe, get out of here. Sorry, sorry, Will. <laughs> yeah, I used to be so obsessed with it when I was a kid that yeah. I would draw the maps and and I would just do the blue dots and the red dots. And uh, that's just just kept it's me insane so for hours. What a strange oh, Josh, We're geeking one. out about yeah. <laughs> about our childhoods and these. <laughs> Arrows, like they need to make arrows dangerous again because arrows would lay you out in Dynasty Warriors like three, four, and five. Like, oh, I found some archers. Guess I'm dead. Ridiculous. Sorry. Such a good game. I mean, I cried, a I, that, that's a game I've cried the most at. I was just like, I'm mean, like 10 year old me, just like sobbing. Don't lie. Just you were so 20. You were 19. 19. All right, I was 19. 19. Yeah, come on. People keep dying. I probably would cry if yeah. I played it again now. Yeah. Hmm. Alan, do you want to know who you're reading, reading The Dispossessed? Leave me alone. <laughs> like, I don't know. Joanna, I'm, I'm sure you can read it with someone else and talk to somebody else about it. Like, everyone <laughs> wants to read stuff with me, but no one wants to read it on my time, which is <laughs> soon TM. Hey, what, what's the timeline on uh, Guy Jin? Because originally we were going to do... That's right. Yeah. Man. Yeah, look, <laughs> if I didn't have this read along, Josh, if I didn't have to read Servant of the Empire, I would be reading yeah. this instead. This yeah. is what this is really what I want to be reading. Um, yeah. Not that I don't think Servant of the Empire is going to is not going to be good. I know it's going to be good, but I really I really would rather read Guy Jin, but I'm behind. So okay. um, if I finish Servant of the Empire um, in time, I will probably start Guy Jin then. I'll let I'll let you know before I start. OK, gotcha. Because I'll read it slow as molasses. Yeah, you I got to see there's a Shogun program coming out, I think, next year. I'm sure it'll suck, oh. too. I... <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Please let it be good. Please I know. Good. They're going to cut out anything interesting. Um, yeah. Blackthorn is going to be an amazing samurai. He probably be won't like... be in it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right. Toranaga won't be, won't be a plotting genius, but instead will be the best warrior ever. Yeah. They'll make sure we explicitly get the anal beat scene, right? Like they <laughs> show everything and all the nudity in that because we got to have that. Please let it be good. That was the Guy Gabriel K influence on Shogun, 100%. All <laughs> right. <laughs> Look, that scene had more purpose than that than the sex scene. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I, will say, I hope it'll be good but yeah james clavel is someone i need to read a lot more of uh, i've heard great things about king rat as well yeah king rat is literally just the fictionalized version of his time in the japanese pow camp yeah, yeah. Uh, like he wrote shogun to process his yeah. 
feelings for the Japanese. Yeah. Um, because he, you know, I'm, I'm sure you have extremely complicated yeah. feelings. Just like, I mean, just like with Korea and Japan coming now to try to like, you know, talk about alliances and stuff like for Korea to sit down at the table with Japan, you yeah. know, is, is a huge deal because. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, Japan. <laughs> I don't know. I, I have, I already said earlier, I don't want any of my favorite things being adapted, but since it's already in the works, I just hope, I just hope it's good. Please let it be good. Please. Yeah. Can it just be good? Can I enjoyed be- the TV so enough. You know, I've, I've watched that a few cool. times and uh, yeah, it was, it was fun for what it was, but uh <sighs> Hopefully. Yeah. We'll see. You haven't read Shogun yet, have you? No, so I'm a bit scared about what I, I don't was just know how about, dads but... let you live here for so long without reading Shogun. <laughs> I know. I had to read it as a rite of passage. I've got, I've got a copy on the uh, on the shelf at least. Oh wow. So... <laughs> You've got a copy of almost everything. So good. I love like I just love the cultural aspect yeah. that Clavel Clavel writes. Like obviously it's and, and and he doesn't he doesn't take a very obvious you know, pro Western stance. It's often, it's often very, you know, pro East. Like yeah, yeah. The, the the English are gross and, you know, have no like table manners in Shogun, you know, and then, and then in um, Taipan, you know, the Chinese know how to not have, you don't sit in a ship's room with all the windows closed when someone's got malaria and <laughs> yeah. no fresh air, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, wash your hands. So uh, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. I was upset that the the final battle wasn't wasn't actually in it though. That always upset. Oh, that Sekigahara is not in Shogun. Yeah. yeah. Well, true. I kind of go play Samurai Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of liked it that it wasn't actually. Did you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got. I think I was fifteen, and I was like, "Well, where's where's the swords? Yeah. Come on." Oh yeah. Yeah. Just the last for me, the last scene with Toranaga is just like so incredible when you see his yeah when you see his underlying why he was doing so much of what he was doing in regards to blackthorn i mean just yeah so so good yeah Yeah. it's like peak mic drop moment it's just so good yeah absolutely amazing yeah that was uh (laughs) remarkable read so fingers crossed that fx doesn't screw it up (laughs) not (laughs) not, not gonna hold my breath though (laughs) I'm trying to think of any other Japanese historical fiction I've read, but I haven't. So I, I have, read. I got Musashi. <laughs> I haven't read it yet, but Musashi is like the answer to Shogun because it takes place like right after Sekigahara. Yeah. And it's like by a Japanese author and is nothing like Shogun. Yeah. Um, and then I grabbed a couple other like Japanese historical fictions, but I haven't, I haven't read it yet. Oh, I read, I read Taiko by um, Yoshikawa, but I oh, just. Is it good? No. So I don't think so. I mean, I I, it was written in the 30s, I think. So it just feels incredibly dated. Okay. And it just feels a bit very melodramatic and inconsistent. And that bothered me. But I do want to read Musashi. So I was, I was still well, read, but uh, yeah. I think Zara was talking about this a few months ago. Yeah, uh, she was. She read it. So uh, yeah, that's I'm, I'm the same way. I want to read that one too. But um. The, yeah. uh, the the manga Vagabond is apparently just it's just Musashi. It's just the book yeah. Musashi, but it's manga. Vagabond's great. I've, I've, I really enjoy Vagabond. I've not, I have not finished it. I, I don't know, Evie. Like, I, what are y'all doing? I have no idea. Is the answer to all of those questions? If you're asking me when something's getting read, I don't know. I don't know. I think they're making it up, Alan. I don't know if you've committed to this. Just seeing what you remember. Yeah, all these, all these. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> Oh my gosh. It's not, I'm not talking about Evie, but all like, especially when people who like work from home ask me when I'm going to read something, I'm like, shut up. Like <laughs> put your earbud back in while you're typing away at your computer and listen to your audiobooks, and then shut up and ask <laughs> me how much I read while I'm at school at my job. The answer is none. Zero. Z- like I have no time to do that at my, like at my job. So, oh my gosh. Put your earbud back in. <laughs> 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 no, 
No, I think Alan, you said one time that buddy reads are like the can be the death of all of us. <laughs> I always think about that. Buddy reads, you're like Giles Corey from the freaking Crucible, just more weight as they pile on and slowly crush the life out of you to because you're a witch, I guess. But that's what it is. Like you just take too many and then you just feel bad that you can't meet in commitment and you already feel bad about yourself because you have low self-esteem. And then, you know, like, I guess I'm just, I just can't meet any obligation. And then you just, you just go to the beach and you just walk into the sea and you never stop walking. And no one ever hears you. <laughs> you become a legend. Just right, right to get down my, my long list of things to not do on booktube. Join body reads, walk into ever. the sea. Ever. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't even read anymore. So, <laughs> nor do I post videos. Who no. reads he read nowadays? No, at no what one. point? At what point are you no longer a booktuber if you don't read and you don't post videos? Like, when do they take it from you? Yeah, there must be a time limit, surely. The license yeah. may be revoked. Yeah. <laughs> well, they can come take it. I guess the booktube police. <laughs> the booktube police, indeed. There you go. That's the way to do it. Find a reason to make your students read it too. My students can <laughs> only like only like one in three can read anything. So you know, they, can't, they certainly can't read the instructions at the top of the page. So. <laughs> and they're all watching this right now. <laughs> I don't care. I say it to their face. <laughs> you tell them which one can read and which ones can't. Oh, oh sure. I ask them. I, I ask them all the time how they got how they got to high school, like, and they cannot read the top of the page, or that they don't know to put their name on something. I'm like, really? How, how long? How long have you been doing this? Put your name on paper. I cannot train. I I can't figure out who you are from your chicken scratch. Put your name on it. <laughs> so, uh, Alan, what, how old are the kids you teach? Because the ones I uh, teach are eight, and they can't no, come by their names. Mine are anywhere from fourteen to eighteen. <laughs> so so that will never change then that's good to know okay no it won't it won't ever change and they cry exactly as much as they cry when they're toddlers mm. <laughs> my grade is bad but i didn't study or do anything instead i flipped through tiktok watching videos of people dancing with the tiny shorts <laughs> <laughs> oh well they, they uh, just don't uh, change yeah no no, the same. <laughs> kids are terrible things, really. Kids are terrible things. I you love my students, it? but they are <laughs> obnoxious. Like, just, <laughs> just do some work. Like, do some work. Stop complaining about it. Just do it. Like, just do some work. <laughs> you can make sure Baby Irish writes her name at the top of the page. Yeah. Just, well, well, they don't have time to study for something. They got time to binge an entire Netflix series in a day. <laughs> but they don't, got time, they don't get time to look at 20 vocabulary words. Oh, no. No, I was asking too much. <laughs> oh <dear. laughs> all true <laughs> i i had last year my i teach the same grade level like 14 mm -hmm. to 18 and i i asked my i always ask my seniors that are about to graduate like on their last day to give words of wisdom to the younger people in the class like what would you tell your younger self and one kid last year she said Stop wasting time on TikTok when you should be doing your homework. And I'm in the back like this. And then she said, and stop bragging about getting no sleep because it's not a way to flex. And I'm <laughs> here in the back like, yes. And of course, the younger kids don't listen to that. But um, no, no. Okay, well, at least that kid learned it before they went to college. And they'll probably be pretty successful. <laughs> yeah. So one, one will flourish. And that is enough, really. <laughs> As long as there's one. Expectations got to be too high. Yeah. I get to teach, um, like you, Josh, I get to teach a lot of the same kids um, yeah. because, you know, they, we're an elective, so they take our class multiple times. And it's always really good to see kids that I've taught for three or four years that yeah. they used to be like the kids I'm talking about come out and, they, and they'll, and they like, have a free period because they're, they're taking a class at the college online. So they'll sit at a table in the corner of my room and they'll hear the kids the like first years do the stuff that they used to do and they go, Ooh, not a smart move. Oh, because they know the stuff that's going to like rile me up. The stuff that's yeah. going to be like, Hey, we were about to do nothing. This happened on Friday. I was, it, we had a weird pep rally day. So the schedule was weird. So I taught for half the class and I was about to sit down and be like, you know what guys, you're going to have the rest of your, you know, the rest of the class uh, to yourself. And a kid went, let's go. 
And I said, okay, well, since no one wants to work, get out your boards and we're going to do some work. And the kid in the corner was like, oh, so close. Because he did that exact same thing when he was a first year, celebrated the fact that we weren't doing anything. And then I immediately made them do something. So <laughs> I just love to see that they learn to like, you know, study and, and do their homework and, you know, give a crap about anything. Uh, it's always fun to see. <laughs> No, that, I think that's one of the best things about my job is just seeing, because I do, I have the kids all four years and they, yeah. seeing them as 14 year olds. And then when they get to be seniors and go on and do great things, it's quite remarkable. Some of them that as, as ninth graders, you wonder like, is this kid going to make it? <laughs> and then they turn into these remarkably eloquent young adults by the time they leave. And yeah. uh, it's <clears throat> gratifying for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's funny with my kids. You, 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 because they're right. I mean, they'll always be doing strange things. But you'll watch them and you think, "I need to mention this." The parents' evening, and then you meet the parents, and then it's, "Ah, uh, the apple doesn't fall far." I understand now, so I won't mention it. They, they have no hope. But it's fine. <laughs> always, <laughs> we always learn much that way. No, no two days are ever the same, are they? In teaching, so. No. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I think the hardest I did, I did two years of um, what we call here in the States middle school, which I guess is like 12 to 14, roughly six, six seven, eighth graders. Yeah. Six, seven, eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And that was to me the most challenging teaching. I would never teach middle school for any reason. Ever. Cause it was, it was, you know, they're just hormonal <laughs> and sometimes like a kid just physically can't stay in their seat. And, and uh, yeah, that was a tough, that was a tough, tough level. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. How like long have you been teaching, Josh? This is year 25. Wow. Ooh, yeah. nice. This is year 11 for me. Um, and I don't know where a decade went. But yeah, I can't believe I've, I'm certainly, I'm certainly not old enough to have taught 25 years. So I don't know how that yeah, happened. Yeah, like, <laughs> don't you have like five more and then you can get out with a pension? Yeah, technically, I can retire in six. Um, it wouldn't make financial sense to do it, though. So I'll probably teach 10 or 12 more. But um, yeah, but I, I mean, I'm, I'm at a pretty remarkable school, to be honest. Um, and my my program is pretty remarkable as well. That's so awesome. it's, it's it's a great place to be. I mean, I couldn't see myself going anywhere else. For a while, That's I was going to go back to school and do try to be a college professor, do that thing. But um I'm at a point where really without bragging my, my high school students, my orchestra plays better than a lot of colleges. So there's, nice. really, there's awesome. really, yeah, there's really no reason for me to go anywhere. That's awesome. Yeah. Until I retire and then I'll <laughs> move somewhere else. <laughs> if anything, to get out of the heat, my God, it's been like 106 degrees for like three months. It's always hot. It's so always hot here. <laughs> Whenever I hear you guys talk about Fahrenheit, it really scares me because obviously we're we're Celsius, and you hear 106, and you're like, "Damn, all the water is boiling." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Whoa, yeah. If, what is it today? So it's like what 30, 30 degrees, 20, 28, 29 degrees Celsius for us today. But that is just a killer. Yeah, we just can't put up with this. The yeah. whole, whole summer yeah. though, we've not had like a day of sunshine. It's yeah. been like an hour, and then like winds and storms. And when school resumes, really really the weather gets good. But then now it's hit September, it's like, oh, we're just gonna go into summer. Yeah. It's really weird. No, I loved the times. I had a friend that lived in London for several years. That for a couple summers, I was just going over because I had a free place to stay, and it was just I marveled at the difference <laughs> between the weather there and in Texas in the summer. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, it's so temperamental here. It's like if, if you had a nap, like, and you wake up, it's like a completely different day, like the weather outside. It did rain a lot. I remember we took umbrellas pretty much everywhere we went. <laughs> it was funny, though. I was in, I took a trip to Japan and Korea this summer and was having dinner with a friend in, in Seoul. And she asked me how I was dealing with the heat. And I just laughed at her. <laughs> Because it is hum as hot and humid it is over there, it's nothing compared to what we've been going through this summer. It's yeah. been yeah, it's been horrible. It's brutal. Absolutely. I I wear jeans every day, like every single day of my life, 
unless I am literally swimming. Um, and it, even in summer and I have finally reached a point. I don't think I can do it anymore. I think I am. I think I'm too old. I don't think I can either. It's got, I've gotten too old or it's gotten too hot. Like mm -hmm. I can't wear jeans every day in the summer. Like I can't, it's too hot. It's too hot, but I don't, I don't, I don't own a pair of shorts. I don't own one. I don't own a pair of shorts. Cut the legs. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that was sold out. No, I told Christine, I'm like, I'm going to have to, like, I don't, I haven't worn shorts in, in years. And so I don't know how to buy shorts. I don't know what shorts, what style of shorts is in. I don't know what shoes you're supposed to wear with shorts. I have jeans and slip on loafers and I wear them every single day, <laughs> every single day. And so you have to get on TikTok, Alan, to get some fashion. I'm not. I'm not getting on TikTok. I know. I'm not. I'm not getting on TikTok. <laughs> I don't understand it, and I hate it. I'm not wearing Daisy. Trust me, nobody wants that, Kev. <laughs> Alan and Daisy Dukes. That's a visual I don't need to see. Nobody <laughs> wants that. <laughs> I had shorts in high school. I had jean shorts. Yeah, I did too. Yeah, I'm glad that's dead. <laughs> Yeah. They're coming back into fashion. They're uh, they're back out there in the wild. Are they really? Yeah. Wow. Mm. Really? As we'll see today. William, the... stand up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, wow. Will's, got, Will's rocking the jorts. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> oh, my yeah, gosh. I, I always have to do the math in my head for Celsius. Literally yeah. just Google it. Yeah. I literally just Google <laughs> <much. laughs> I love how we were talking about Abercrombie and like Yellow Sky Revolt and historical fiction recommendations. And now we're talking about jorts. <laughs> that's 113 Fahrenheit. That's ludicrous. <laughs> yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you, Ben. Like, I, yeah, especially here. Way, way too hot for that. It's too hot. It's too hot. <laughs> So, Will, your your degree is going to be in English and history. Is that what you're studying? I seen yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it'd be a joint honors. So I'll be doing studying both, which would be uh, it'd be good. Looking forward to it. You're choosing your mo modules soon, aren't you? Uh, well, I've already chosen the English ones, and then the history ones. It depends on there's like limits to the classes. So, hopefully, I get my preferences. Yeah, that's exciting. I know your university there is a lot different than here. I know mm. that from. I had a student that was at Harvard that. Um, did a year in Oxford and um, I visited, I happened to be one of the years I was over there, I visited her at Oxford and she was telling me just the differences. It seems like mm -hmm. your studies over there are a lot more kind of individual kind of focused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. most of the hours would be my own kind of independent reading. Yeah, that's, that's so different than yeah. what we have over here. <laughs> Although the uni I'm going to, they do it a little bit differently. So it's probably more like America because you can have um, you and one other person talk to like a lecturer or professor, um, which a lot of unis don't do. But I'll have that a few times each week. So, Yeah, she said she liked it because she did have that, just that felt that individual like connection as, as far as what she was doing. And she could focus on what she wanted to work on a lot. And just very interesting. Mm. Um, Evie had a comment about standalones. She wants to yell at us. Have any of us? I haven't read Simon Jimenez. That's, I, uh, I've Vanish heard of Birds, I think. Vanished Birds, I think. Yeah, Vanished one. Birds and Spear Cuts Through Water. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry, Evie. We, none of us have read that. So You can shout to us, though. It's fine. Yeah. You can, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, you, Alan, you said you were going to read that what, last year, I think. I said I was going to read what? <laughs> I'm joking. No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they pick all the read the the buddy reads for you. Sorry, Evie, haven't read that. Do you think I'd like it? I mean, you know my love of Hob, so um, that's kind of a uh, at least one focus of mine. Sandalos need to uh, to come back into fashion. I mean, I the, agree. The last one I read was sort sort of Kaigan, maybe last standalone. Another great book. Yeah, I just got the um, the Kickstarter one in the mail. Oh, it looks beautiful. Ago. Yeah. It's it's truly beautiful. I can't wait to read that one. So um, there we go. Evie's yelling. So Vanished Birds, Spear Cuts Through Water. 
Uh, they're on my TBR, but I have like a physical TBR, like too many books right now. So it might take a while. I um, love to read more duologies. I wish there's more out there because obviously I, I like a, a, a big long series and uh, I love a standalone, but I feel like there needs to be more duologies because it's kind of long enough to really adore it. And, and then but publishers not too don't long. have to take a gamble, do they? Yeah. Which they don't want to do. That's true. I just read while well, sci-fi Hyperion and fall of Hyperion last month. And um, I read them. Yeah. It was nice to, nice to kind of do it that way. But um, yeah. yeah, I, I loved them. They were both fantastic. I've heard good things about Dan Sims. I think I've, I just bought Ilium. Um, that Ilium, one was, Ilium. I, I, yeah, I read Ilium and it's, I, I struggled with the whole in media res where he just throws you into the action in that one. And it was, it seemed like for me, it took like 150 pages to figure out what the hell was going on. But um, yeah, his, he's definitely one of the more ambitious kind of writers I've read. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, those were good. I've read my favorite of his I've read, I've read, I don't know, I'm looking at my shelf. I guess I've read six by him. My favorite's the terror which is mm. kind of historical fiction slash horror. And it's about the Franklin expedition looking for the Northwest passage and they get stuck in the ice and then something happens. And yeah, um, yeah he's, he's definitely a, a, a heck of a, uh, a heck of a writer. Yeah. There's a dual of Tarantino mosaic. Yeah. Another GGK duology. Yeah. I'm with you. It's, it's, it's hard, especially once you start accumulating books to like commit to a big, long, crazy, big, long series. Yeah. 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 But oh, buying so. and book reading are two completely different hobbies. That's yeah. Like looking at my shelves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your shelves look great. Thank so how you. are you, how are you going to survive without that? Uh, when you go to university, oh, I know. I'll look after them. It's fine. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I'll come back. There'll be rents in the walls, books missing. <laughs> It's gonna be terrible. <laughs> that Robin Hobb shelf will be. Don't you? You don't touch the Robin missing. Hobb shelf. I have to like put like bars over it. So <laughs> can be reached. You memorize where they are. Bulletproof glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now my yeah, some nice shelves. We I yeah. just put some shelves in my living room, and they've just got like just a few select books on there, but they're piling up too quickly. That's yeah. things like a challenge, isn't it? Yeah. And, Seems, then there's a bit and then of space. you buy it's a book like, like the Count of Monte Cristo, and it's like. 1100 pages and it just takes up a whole shelf basically yeah no i i had a uh i have this weird thing like my main shelf over here the one in my videos they um uh, i don't put books on my shelf unless i've read them so like i have these like i have a bottom shelf down here of stuff i haven't read and then i have a whole bunch just in like a shelf on my closet yeah, yeah. So i either have to get over that or or i'm not sure that's quite well, that's organized. Motivation, isn't that, it? that is quite organized as well. Yeah, but like I'm pretty much I was out of space on the main shelf, but I just sold back like 20 books to a half price bookstore yesterday. So I now have like this much space. <laughs> so it's like time for another shelf, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. It's yeah, the collecting is another side of it. But, you know, I see the sort of Kaigen like I need that in my life that's beautiful i need to order that i see uh, I blame these artists. Islands. i blame yeah, these artists, artists and all these just people terrible. just making amazing additions yeah it's their fault really <laughs> okay good we'll blame them <laughs> we need to blame yeah um okay well that's cool evie about vanished birds love that spear cuts through water fantasy okay We'll check kind out. Of literary side of things. Lyrical without being purple. That's my favorite kind. Yeah, kind of a lilac lyrical. <laughs> <laughs> a li that's good. Yeah, Ben. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you. I mean, I say I don't like long series, but then Rome the Elder Rings is my favorite. But at least with that, I like how it was broken up into the different sub-series. Mm -hmm. Because I read the, the 16 books over the span of about 15 months, probably. So I would read a trilogy and then take six, eight weeks off, get to the next yeah. one. And it at least seemed like it was more um, manageable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I only actually uh, started reading A Song of Ice and Fire last year. And I'd never watched the program either. So I knew some spoilers. But um, yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was great. It's still great reading it. 
I bet I, I can really understand people obviously reading them as they release, like their frustration. But I think um, obviously knowing that the series isn't finished, I think it meant I could still kind of enjoy the books. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, the first three are, I mean, about as good as anything in my yeah. opinion. But uh, yeah, we'll see. I don't, I don't think he'll finish though. I think we might get Winds of Winter, but mm. I think A Dream of Spring is a dream. <laughs> yeah. Literally. <laughs> is, is Daniel Abraham the most likely to... to no write idea. Out? Do you reckon? No idea. He says that he says that Martin is delightful. He's a delightful, a delightful man. Very, very nice um, and very cordial. So I have no idea, though. I have no idea, though, if it's going to be. I mean, maybe it's nobody. Maybe he taps nobody to do it. I think that's what Martin said. I think because somebody asked him if he ever finished, if he wanted somebody to finish. And I think he said no. I mean, who who would want to do it? Like, yeah. That's just, you're just asking for it. Just get like a Netflix showrunner to do it. And there we, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Dave and Dave or whatever their names are. <laughs> yeah. <Dave and Dave. laughs> yeah. No, they. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's one of those like. Who could step in? But then you realize, I mean, I thought Sanderson ender finished Wheel of Time really well. I actually felt that as much as I complained a little bit about Jordan's prose a little bit, I actually missed it when Sanderson took over because Sanderson's mm -hmm. writing style is so, I don't know, perfunctory and just kind of yeah. to the point. But um, I still think he ended the series very well. So um, it's hard to say. I think it'll be what... Martin's estate, how much money they have at the time, if they want to uh, <laughs> get somebody to do it or not. Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't hey, be a fun job. There you go, Matt. You, you go for it. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty adamant it'll die with him. Wow. <laughs> Jimmy said, Abraham said he wouldn't do it, nor would Frank. Interesting. So... I wonder if they'd get someone if they would just ghostwrite it or. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, at the time, I mean, with. I, I want to say Sanderson wasn't famous yet with Wheel of Time. I'm not sure on that. I think he's, um, he's had a book published, but he wasn't big, I don't think. Yeah. So, just being, just so, I, I, so maybe that would be the case where they somebody else would do it. Yeah. I mean, I remember somebody asking. Um, yeah, this is exactly it someone asking joe and and he said no he couldn't imagine writing somebody else's characters yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and that would be the thing it's it's uh i mean you see that because even with i felt wheel of time that sanderson didn't capture matt very well and just realize how hard it is to write consistent characters mm -hmm. so Porter had come out okay so he had been published a little bit but um yeah, I don't know. It'd be interesting. Yeah, this is the one. Yeah, I agree with that, Jimmy. Somebody not famous, but... Um, yeah. We can see. We can hope. Um, Could yeah. be a booktuber. Who knows? There we go. It will not be a booktuber. I can go ahead and let you know that. <laughs> I, I'll go ahead and put down my retirement on that one. <laughs> I'll be a booktuber. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, Abercrombie's voice is so unique. I yeah, so different as well. Yeah, yeah, very, very different. His yeah. humor as well. Yeah, and I don't. Yeah, and he's that's too, a bit weird in Game of Thrones. Yeah, I mean, who would? What would Abercrombie have to gain by doing it? Yeah, like nothing. So, yeah, there we go. It'll be AI. <laughs> Ugh. Great. Horrible. <laughs> well, I think um, I think we can wrap things up here. It has been just a true delight to have all three of you on my channel. Uh, Ed and Will is the first time we've gotten to chat on screen. So it's been just a pleasure watching you guys. Will, best of luck with university. I look forward to hopefully seeing, you know, some of your updates talking about you know, what you've learned about the Hobbit in class and things like that. But um, Ed, best of luck with the newborn. I hope that you uh, have a good sleep schedule going, going forward. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Me too.
Yeah. <laughs> and Alan, as always, it's great to talk with you and um, definitely let me know when we're going to read Dai Jin because I'm looking for sure. <laughs> and I'll, I'll hit you up about um, Servant of the Empire also as I read it. So cool. I cool. understand why I should care about Kevin. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, I have some thoughts. I'll do those off screen. But um, <laughs> everybody in the chat, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for the question. And um, yeah, I, I appreciate all of you being here. Have a great rest of your afternoon or evening or bre or morning, wherever you may be. And we'll see you next time. Yeah. Thanks for having us, Thank Josh. you so much. Uh, Truth and